Hello there, everybody. In this video, I gotta cover generics in Java. Generics, it's a concept. It's where you can write a class, interface, or method, and it's compatible with different data types. There's two things we need, a type parameter and a type argument. So with type parameters, it's a set of angle brackets with a letter inside, for example, T. Basically, this acts as a placeholder, and it gets replaced with the real type. Now, on the other hand, type arguments, with various objects and data structures, you'll see a pair of angle brackets with a type inside, such as a string, but it really can be anything. It can be an integer, or a boolean, really anything. Type arguments specify the type. We send arguments to parameters. Really, our type parameter is just acting as a placeholder. Anything that uses this type parameter, it doesn't know the data type that it's going to receive. It's set up to receive really anything, or a primitive using a wrapper class. Let me give you an example of where you already see a generics being used. For example, array lists. To create an array list, we add a set of angle brackets after array list, and we have to specify the type. What is this array list going to store? For example, strings. We would write the data type of string. Let's say that this array list is named fruits. Fruits equals new array list, and then we need a set of angle brackets again, parentheses, semicolon. In modern Java, within the second set of angle brackets, you don't necessarily need to type the data type again. Java can infer that, so you can leave it empty. This is the diamond operator. We have an array list that can store strings. We have specified the type argument, and now we can store some strings within our array list. So let's take our array list of fruits, call the add method, and add a few names of fruits, such as an apple. Let's do two more. Apple, orange, banana. Currently, the way that we set up this array list, it's compatible with strings, because that's what we set the type argument to be. Now, if I set this to be integers, well, we can't store strings anymore, but we could store numbers. One, two, three. That's fine. Let me change that back. Generally speaking, an ArrayList data structure can store all sorts of different data types, but when we create one, we have to specify what we're storing. That's the type argument. It's because within the ArrayList class, we have a type parameter set up, a set of angle brackets with a letter inside. In many cases, you'll see T meaning type for type parameter. So let's actually take a look at our ArrayList. I am going to locate ArrayList, jump to source, Here's the class for our array list. There's a lot of advanced Java in here. Don't worry about that. But what I want you to pay attention to is the type parameter that comes after the array list class name. We have angle brackets and a letter inside. In this case, E, meaning element, because an array list has elements of data. By using this type parameter, our array list is set up to store elements of various types. We just have to specify what the type is going to be when we actually do store data. And in my example, we're using strings. But like I said before, we can change the data type of what we're storing. We just have to change the type argument. I'll store booleans. True. False. True. I don't know what that has to do with fruits, but I'm just trying to prove a point here. So now what we're going to do is actually use type parameters. So let's delete our array list. Using generics, you can write some logic within a class, interface, or method, and it's compatible with many different data types. So what we're going to do in this example is create a class of box. Class box. We'll be using a type parameter to store all sorts of different things within our box. We can store a string within our box, an integer, a double, a boolean, even more complex objects. So we will set up a type parameter with a set of angle brackets, then type T. T is a common convention, meaning type. Let's say that when we create a box object, our box is going to act as a container. We'll store a value inside. Our box is going to be a reusable class. We won't always know what the data type of what we're storing is going to be. So what we could do is set the data type to be T. Let's say that this variable is an item. We're storing an item within a box. With T, it does mean type, but I like to think of it as thing. We're storing a thing, an item, within our box. We don't know what this thing is going to be. 
but really it means type and that's not as fun. T item. We don't know what the data type is. If it's always going to be a string, we could just set this to be a string. But what if somebody is storing an integer, an int? Or we can use the wrapper class of integer. We don't know what the type is going to be. Let's create a method where we will set our item. Let's say that this is public. Void, it's not going to return anything. Set item. We'll have one parameter. What's the data type of what we're receiving? Well, we don't know. So we're going to use our type parameter of t. t is the data type. It's generic. We will receive an item. Let's take this dot item and set it to be the item that we receive. We'll create a method to get our item. Public. Now we're going to be returning an item. The data type is t. So the return type is also going to be t. We're returning a value of the t data type. We will create a method to get item. We will return this dot item. We can put things in our box and we can get things from our box. All right, this class is done. Our box class is set up to be reusable. We can store all sorts of different things, so to say, within our box. We will attempt to create a box object. For now, let's say box box equals new box. But there's one step that we're missing. We have a warning here. Raw use of parameterized class box. We need to set up a type argument. What are we going to be putting in our box? What's its data type? Our box class wants to know. So we will use a type argument. After the class of box, add a set of angle brackets, then type what we're going to store. So let's say we're going to store strings within our box. Values of the string data type. And then we do need the diamond operator after the second box. And we're good. We now have a box object. But it's set up to store strings. Let's add some items to our box. We've even created a few methods for this. Set item. Let's take our box, call set item, but we have to pass in a string. Let's add a banana to our box. And then we will get the banana from the box using the get item method. And now I want to get the banana box dot get item. Here we go. We have our banana. We have successfully retrieved the banana from the box. Our box class is compatible with all sorts of different data types. This time, let's store an integer. We will use the wrapper class of integer, but we can no longer add a banana to the box because it's a string. I'll attempt to do so. String cannot be converted to integer. Unfortunately, bananas are not numbers, but I can add the number three to our box. We have the number three within our box. If I attempt to add a double, like 3.14, we get a warning. Incompatible types. Double cannot be converted to integer. So I would have to set the type argument to be double, to add doubles to our box. 3.14. Basically, with our box class, we're writing the logic of how a box works. You put something in, and you can take something out, and it's compatible with different data types. We just have to use a type argument when creating a box object. We have to let Java know what we're storing within it exactly. All right, let me give you another example. Now with type parameters, you can have more than one type. We can have two or more different types. Usually the common convention is to use u after t. So we're going to create a new class, file, new, Java class. We will create a class of product. Here we're going to write the logic of how a product works. With a product, you have an item and you have a price. We will set up a type parameter. Let me zoom in. We'll have one type of T and a common convention for the second type is U because in the English alphabet, the letter U comes after T. If you had a third argument, that would be V by common convention. So we'll just stick with T and U. We will have a generic type of item and another generic type 
of price. We don't know if our item is going to be a string or a more complex object. Our price could be an integer, a floating point number, a double. We don't know, but that's why we're setting it up this way. Now we'll need a constructor. We will take our product, then set up some parameters. The data type of our item is T, T item. But if we're creating a product, we also need a price. The data type of our price is U, U price. This dot item equals the item that we receive. This dot price equals the price that we receive. Okay, let's do a test run. Let's go to our main Java file. Product, product equals new product. And again, we need those type arguments. So this time we actually need two because our class is set up to receive two type arguments, T and U. For our product, let's say that the first type is going to be a string followed by a double. And then we need the diamond operator after the second product. All right, now we have to pass in arguments to the class because we have a constructor. We have to pass in an item and its price. And with our type arguments, we set that up to be a string and a double. We have to pass in those types. For our product, let's say that it's an apple and an apple is 50 cents. That's a double. Let's create two methods within our product class. We will create a method to get our item. Let's say public, we're returning an item. The data type is T, so we're going to return T. Get item. We will return this dot item. Then to return the price, let's say public u, because we're returning the price, it has a type of u, get price. Return this dot price. We have our product object. I'm going to output, take our product object, call the get item method. And this is going to return our apple. Or I could get the price. Get price. And that is 0 0.5. You can use string format, but that might be overkill for this lesson. All right, let's create a second product. So we'll have product 1 and product 2. Now product 2 will use an integer instead of a double. And let's say that these are tickets, like movie tickets. Ticket, and the price will be 15 for $15. Let's take product two, call the get item method. So we have our ticket, and we should have a price, get price. The price of a movie ticket is 15, $15. All right, everybody, so that is an introduction to generics. It's a concept where you can write a class, interface, or method that is compatible with different data types. Basically, we're writing the logic of how this class works, and it's compatible with all different types. You just have to set up a type parameter and then pass in type arguments. And well, everybody, that is an introduction to generics in Java.